Hello, this is James Brannigan, Applications Expert with Imaginate Technologies. Today I'm going to show you a video about adding materials to your civil project in Twinmotion. In my last video, we looked at how to take your civil project from InfraWorks and import it into Twinmotion. So today we'll take a look at adding materials and adding uh, more objects as well. Before we start, quick note about what Twinmotion is. So Twinmotion, it's a fast, real-time visualization program, which easily produces high-quality images, panoramas, and standard or 360-degree VR videos. As I mentioned, in the last video, we looked at importing the information from InfraWorks into Twinmotion. So just as a reminder, we exported FBX files from InfraWorks and then imported the individual files into Twinmotion. I've left off the trees because uh, I'm going to add the trees here in Twinmotion instead of using the trees from InfraWorks. So adding materials and adding objects uh, to Twinmotion is really straightforward. Um, in the view window here, we've got a little triangle. If I click on that, that's going to expand this library for me. Okay, in the library, we've got options here for objects, and we've got object or options here for materials. So materials will change how something looks. For example, the roadway, um, the grass, any other objects that are already in place that we want to change the materials for. We have options here for a whole lot of materials that have been preloaded into Twinmotion. We've also got access to the Quixel Megascans library as well. We can also add in objects, vegetation, other objects, vehicles. And that's really easy to do. To add an object, I can select the object that I want to add, such as a tree. Select on the tree and just drag it over to where I want to place it. That will give me a bunch of different options here for that tree. We can set the age, we can set the height, we can set whether it's growth, whether there's growth on. So that will, we've got a setting within Twinmotion where we can <clears throat> affect the height and the growth of all of the growing objects at the same time. We can change the leaf tint, the bark tint, whether the season is on or not, and whether it's affected by wind. I also have an option for adding multiple trees and multiple vegetation at the same time. To do that, I can go into the context and then go into vegetation paint or vegetation scatter. Vegetation scatter will do it by an area. Vegetation paint lets me paint where I want to put that vegetation. I can choose the vegetation paint um, either if you've got a pre-existing uh, paint model put together, I can choose that, or I can add in the different vegetation and trees that I want and then start painting through there. Uh, <clears throat> I've already created one vegetation paint option here, and I can select it and get back into that option there. So when we add all of the different options here to that vegetation paint, I can affect the density. I can affect uh, other settings uh, for the individual tree. Again, I can change whether it's affected by wind, whether it's affected by the season, et cetera. So this vegetation paint is a combination of two different trees, some wild grass, and some, uh, some flowers as well. You can change the density here. Okay, so that's going to put European mountain ash at 43%, the Colorado spruce at 44%, the wild grass is going to be 100%, and then we've got some of the flowers, which are lower as well. When I'm ready to paint this, I can click on the vegetation paint. I can change the diameter of the circle that I'm using here. 
Okay, so if I don't need it quite as big, I can reduce that. And then it's just a matter of clicking where I want that vegetation to be painted. Okay, very, very easy to be able to go in and paint in more vegetation and paint in uh, a forest scene, um, paint in grass, paint in trees. And you can see it's much, much higher detail than we would get uh, out of InfraWorks or out of uh, some of the other programs as well. Very easy, very highly detailed. Again, it's going to be affected by wind. It'll be affected by uh, the seasons. It's similar with other objects. Okay, all of the other objects that I've got access to in here, I can go in fairly easily and add them. Things like rocks, grass, flower, miscellaneous, all the different vegetation and, and landscape. Um, vehicles as well. If I want to place static vehicles, I can go in very easily and place the static vehicles. If I want moving vehicles, I also have an option here for underneath the context for putting in paths. And if I click on the paths here, I've got options here for character paths. So if I want pedestrians walking through my scene, if I want bicycles walking through the scene, or if I want vehicles. And again, very easy to put in vehicles moving in my scene. If I click on the vehicle path, start off by clicking the vehicle path icon, and then selecting where that path goes. So just to keep it simple, I will start here and I'll go just up here a little bit. Okay. Once I've set that, again, I have a lot of different options to change how the vehicles look and how many there are. So we've got the lane count in one direction. If I want this to be two lanes, I can just select that and then I get two lanes. Okay, I've got a lane offset, the density of the cars, so this looks a little bit dense at the moment, so let's take that down a bit. Okay. And this will give me fewer cars running along my roadway. The speed as well, if I want to change the speed, let's take that up a little bit. And I can see this, the cars move at a better speed. So again, lots of different options here for easily adding traffic to my scenes. Other options I've got, again, characters. So if I want animals or if I want humans uh, static, then I can place those. If I want them walking, again, I have the option of adding in that path as well. So that is a very quick look at how to add some objects into your civil scene to start making it look a little bit more realistic um, with a lot more detail. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.